So hey guys, how are ya? We're gonna um, give you guys a bit of a rundown on the new 6.8 Oceanic Center console we just built. It's finally finished, well 99.9% .9 finished. The only thing we've got to do is put the boat catch on there, but it's pretty much all done. We head to Exmouth in about three weeks, so got it ready just in time. We're just gonna go through and show you guys what we've, what we've done and um, a few differences between this and the big boat. I basically um, decided to build a smaller boat because I thought it would be easier to fit out. Well, I was wrong. Basically, it's no different to fit out. Basically, your cables are a little, little bit longer, but everything else is pretty much the same. So my, um, my thought process to build the smaller boat is because I'm so busy building the cruiser as well, um, we thought we could uh, save a bit of time doing the, doing the smaller boat, but wasn't the case. Whether it's eight and a half or six and a half, pretty much um pretty much the same and you know by the time you had all the lights and all the rest of the stuff yeah there's no different so um <coughs> we'll start with the trailer one thing we did differently with this build is we went for the aluminium trailer so we uh we opted for the oceanic aluminium trailer pretty much exactly how it comes we added an extra beam in the middle just because we do a lot of miles and felt that it would be better with um with an extra beam in the middle so it's just got rollers down the center with some skids on the side these trailers are um uh, as good as any other trailer I reckon. They're a bolt together trailer, but um, Mate, you, you can't fault them. So I've got the hydrostar electric brake system Nice, nice big I-beam chassis steel cross beams um, Yeah, it's basically exactly as it comes from Oceanic. It's got the upgraded um, Upgraded winch post there. You'll see <coughs> it's um, Yeah, it's just a different winch post to what they usually do so I reckon it makes it look a lot more modern and, and pretty tough too, you know, we uh, we were towing, towing at home on Friday and um, had to lock the brakes up um, for a car that stopped us in front of a set of, at a set of lights and mate, it didn't move, you know, just, yeah, really good, really good sort of winch post. So we're running some nice mag wheels, um, four wheel disc brakes, um, no other LEDs all the way through, it's, uh, lights up quite nice at night like a Christmas tree actually, it's full drive on as well it drives on absolutely perfect every time so you don't have to be quite centre it'll, um, if you're off to the side it'll, it'll sort of roll down in the centre roller and just drive it straight up so the trailer is um, is really good it weighs, the trailer weighs 580 kilos so um, you know that's with that extra beam so half a tonne whereas my big trailer on the big boat weighed exactly one tonne so Aluminium, definitely a lot lighter. Um, before we get on, we've gone for the big 200 Merc. So, like I've said in other videos, I'm not really a Merc fan. <coughs> um, we sort of call them black anchors. I've been towed in a couple of times, twice actually, with Sea Rescue. Both times have been because of a, um, a Mercury. But, all the, um, all the research that I did, I could not find a fault with Mercury. Everyone with with the new Mercs, everyone loved them. Um, one one thing that sold me was Merc are still doing the V6 in the 200 horsepower. Yamaha, Suzuki, and Honda are all going to the four cylinder. This 200 is a V6. So, being um, you know, being the fact that we load it up quite a bit when we go fishing, the V6 with a bit of extra torque, mate, there was it was sort of sort of sold it for us. Um, fuel consumption is mint on it. Like we, we were cruising along. We did a bit of a bit of a fuel test um, when we went out for a fish, myself and Jackson, and we we're basically running about 26 knots, 26 to 27 knots. We're burning 1.1 um, liters per nautical mile. So that's um, that's mint. You can't you can't expect any more than that. We hold 300 liters or 200. And, 285 litres, close enough to 300 litres of fuel, so we've got no worries doing the big trips up to Exmouth, out to the islands and that, and yeah, getting home. The motor's quiet, super, super quiet. The quietest motor um, that I've, I've actually had anything to do with on the outboard. We had the Honda on my previous boat, the Honda was quiet. Suzuki, um, induction noise, it was just it was just noisy when you're cruising along at cruise speed, but this, this Merc, awesome. Absolutely awesome. Can't can't fault it. Ladder. We've changed the ladder on this boat. We've gone from a dive ladder. So when we're up north, 
just snorkeling around and free diving we found that the other ladder um, was just a bit hard to get on and off with, with flippers so we had to sit in the water rip our flippers off and um, and chuck them up here this here just easy to get up and down with um, with the flippers if you're getting when you're building a your boat and you're thinking about a ladder get it ladder as long as you can you see a lot of boats have got ladders on it that you know they're good to get on and off the boat but when you're in the water they're only like this far under water line now you try and get onto a ladder when it's in the water when you're floating in the water and you've got like six inches of ladder sticking underneath your neck like it's it's hard to explain but it's you got to try and get your legs up around your ears we extended this down so you know it's quite easy grab onto this grab onto the rail and get your foot up on that really easy so that's one thing that you want to um you want to be aware of make sure you get a nice long ladder um we're running the bennett trim tabs um once you've once you've had trim tabs on a boat you won't go without them the bennett trim tabs are, uh, are a must um, they're not expensive i think these are around about the sort of 1100 buck mark but they're a must. You've got to have you've got to have trim tabs just to give you that availability to to level the boat up. If you've got a bit of a wind, crosswind or a couple of guys on one side, that's the way to go. Back to the motor quickly. We'll just touch on that. We've gone with a 17 pitch prop. Okay, so <clears throat> this one here is a 14.5 um, by 17 pitch prop. Top speed is 39 and a half knots, and um, it gets out the hole beautifully. So we tried a few props. I think we started off at the I think it was a 15 um, and then a 16 and then yeah finally finally finished on the 17 we're getting that um, 5800 rpm and yeah that that nice 39 and a half knot top speed so it's a good thing so we'll jump up uh, jump up and go oh and before we go we've opted for the um for the tow loop again so this is just so handy climbing on and off towing um towing biscuits around it's just yeah it's just really good and also bit of a bumper bar when you're at the boat ramp and it's a howling howling wind and there's a few boats around always end up um yeah belt your motor around a bit so good for that so we'll jump on and have a good look up here okay so once you jump up here the first thing you'll notice is the center console when i when i designed the center console with aris from oceanic i um i didn't want just a t-top i wanted a proper hard top center console chuck the solar panel up on the roof um store our swags and stuff up up on the roof when we're going camping out the islands and just 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 protection you know just wanted something just wanted a solid center console and also wanted a like a prep station so when we're doing cook-ups or you know whatever we're doing i wanted to have something so as we can um you know so we can chuck a cooker on make some sandwiches make some wraps whatever just just a prep station so we designed this so this is a meaty center console man it is super solid um what we've got in here we've got fresh water we've got um 100 liters of fresh water got a pump here this hose connection here um you know just for washing reels down mainly when you're out there at Exmouth and or well, wherever you are and you've um you know you're staying out out in the out in the boat for a couple of days um it's just nice to wash your gear down so that's mainly for mainly for um washing your gear down in here is just storage Another thing that lacks on a lot of center consoles is storage. You need to have a clear deck. So this is where our back of our fridge, um, all our water pump stuff is, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just awesome. Um, we've tried to think of everything for practicality, um, and yeah, this is just wicked. So basically, all our bags go in there, all our fishing bags go in there, keeps them off the deck, and uh, yeah, just ideal. So uh, if you have a look now um, at the bait board, this bait board is a bit of a, um, a new thing Oceanics are doing. They've, they've got a drawer going in here. So rather than just have like a shelf, this drawer is uh, is pretty cool. Just a nice little touch, something different that they're doing now. Um, but yeah, that drawer, that drawer's mint. It's just on Teflon slides, so the slides are never going to wear out. Quite simple, but yeah, but really good. Um, we'll go... Uh, We'll go up the front of the boat first and we'll work our way down. I just wanted to show you guys the prep station. My favorite thing about the boat. So work our way from the front to the back. We're running the Viper winch again. Um, I've heard a couple of people have problems with the Viper winches. I've had two of them now on both my boats and never had a drama. Love the Viper winch, it's a drum winch. Um, doesn't have free fall, but most of the time, like before, we're only anchoring in maybe 10 meters of water at max. So usually up north, five, six meters. But um, 
the free fall doesn't really doesn't really bother us. But um, the big Viper winch, love it. No more pulling the anchor. Um, this class casting platform here is huge. There's more room up the front of this boat than there was my eight and a half meter. So you're going to get three people up here throwing lures all day, and um, you know not not rub shoulders. Once again, storage. We have like a um, little storage hatch here. Um, they're wet storage, so don't think you're going to um, stick your GoPros and stuff in here. But perfect for like your sea anchor and buoys and that sort of stuff. This here also. It's um, basically what happens is this that um, that storage compartment drains into this storage compartment, which drains out to the deck. So another wet storage, but um, yeah, always uh, always needing room to put stuff. Just waiting on the cushion. We're putting a cushion there with a backrest, and um, yeah, that should be ready next week. So perfect little spot for a couple of people to sit. Okay, so um, the roof, as you can see, awesome hard top, plenty of tie down points. We'll leave. We'll put our swags up here. We'll put like a little table up here, some fold up chairs and all that sort of stuff, and. Um, yeah, so I would not have a boat without a hard top these days, just for what we do. It just gives you a bit more protection and somewhere to chuck all your crap. Um, lighting. We're going with the steady lighting. The steady lighting is, is what we believe is as good as anything else out there on the market. You know, it's not super expensive, but it does the job. Super bright LEDs, low current draw. Two things that you want when you're mucking around with um, lighting. Um, we're running the 180 watt Red Arc solar panel. We've gone Red Arc throughout this this build. So we've got the Red Arc solar panel, Red Arc BCDC, um, battery management system, and yeah, Red Arc we believe is um, is the best gear on the market at the moment. Well, not at the moment. For the last 30 years, they've been the best. But um, yeah, I just think you can find cheaper stuff out there. But if you want the best and you want reliability, you've got to go Red Arc. There's no other option. Um, so 180 watts, that, that runs our fridge pretty much full time. So that solar panel is running our 8 litre Waco pretty much full time. It's on now. And just to test it before we go away, we've had the um, we've had the fridge running for the last week just sitting here in the driveway. We've had some pretty ordinary weather. We've had like three days of rain. And um, it's keeping up no problem. That fridge is sitting around sort of one degree and the batteries have not gone down past sort of 12.5 volts the whole time. So. Um, the Red Arc, the Red Arc solar panel, 180 water, is keeping up beautiful through the um, through the BCDC 1225D. Red Arc, mate, is it's it, it is it is the best gear. If you want the best, you might you might think, oh yeah, you can save money doing something else, but there's no compromise when it comes to reliability and um, and just just basically just doing what it's supposed to do. It's quite simple, you know. Um, but yeah, love Red Arc gear. Got it everywhere. Got it in my cruiser. Got it in the boat and um, no problems with flat batteries ever, hopefully. But um, we've got yeah we've got lights basically on on each point. So we've got two lights at the rear, two lights at the front for our fishing lights, and we've got one light bar just for when we're coming into the um, coming into the jetty and that sort of stuff. So we've got one antenna for our um, AM FM and the other antennas for our VHF. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for up here. Running, um, running the Simrad GPS. That's the antenna for the Simrad, and yeah, we'll hop down and show you down down below. Okay, so with this boat, the whole idea of having a center console is to keep the boat open. So we've decided to go with clears all the way around. Didn't want a windscreen. Um, wanted the ability to to open it up, roll it all up. So when you when you when you're up there in the hot days or up north or whatever, I wanted the idea of having an open boat. But I still want a protection, so when it's hot, we can roll that up, roll all the sides up, you know, and have a fully open boat. If it gets a bit bit crappy out there and we get a bit of spray or whatever, roll it all down, or if it's cold, roll it down and you're snug as a bug in a rug. But um, yeah, the ability to roll it all up is just was just a must when we've decided how we were gonna do it. So just to keep the boat open. The guys at um Mandra Canvas, Andy, he uh he, he smashed it out of the park with this. It's exactly what we wanted. If we want, we can just open one panel, like we've got over here. We can open one panel, leave one panel down. We can open both panels, or if, if it's a bit 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 crappy, we are getting a bit of spray, but we want airflow, we just open the rear one. And um, 
still got airflow, but we've got a bit of protection. So, yeah, go and see Andy at uh, Mandra Mandra Canvas if you need any boating boating clears or anything really for that matter. They do interior. They do, yeah, they do a lot of stuff. They're they're good guys. We've decided to go with the two Go Nines in this boat. Um, we've got plenty of room on the dash. On the big boat, we decided for one 12 inch unit because we're a bit tight on room. Um, always like to have two units, although having the one unit was no problem. But you know, we're using one unit now for to run the one kilowatt transducer, and then the other unit is basically for a plotter. Um, the unit that we're using for the plotter, we can also use the um, three in one transducer, so side scan, down scan, and 3D imaging which I've never used and have no idea how to use it, but um, <clears throat> it's something that we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a look at and brush up on and yeah, see how it goes. Um, the Mercury gauge or Mercury drive-by-wire gear. I just, I, I, can't, I can't stop talking about the Mercury. I love it, eh? I, I never thought I'd say it, but absolutely rate the Mercury. It's, it's, uh, it's awesome. We're, um, we're looking at, uh, you know, thinking about a next build already. Um, unfortunately, Mercury don't do a, um, a 350 horsepower in their new motor. Um, 300 is the biggest they do. So um, yeah, if, we, if, we, if we're going to build a bigger boat, which I think we will, another eight and a half, we want to put a 350 on this one. And um, unfortunately, Mercury don't do anything bigger than the 300. So in their new in their new platform, they, if you want if you want to go 350, it's the old supercharged Verado. I ain't gonna go near that, but um, <clears throat> yeah, this this new Merc, the new platform. I'll, I'll, I wish they had the 350, but uh, they don't, so we might have to look elsewhere. But yeah, can't can't fault them. Absolutely love the Merc. Um, we've got autopilot as well. We're running autopilot on this boat, which I did my last one. Just you're just less fatigued, you know. Some people will go, oh yeah, we're gonna put um, we're gonna put so, so, um, sonar. We're gonna put sonar on the boat or radar. I reckon uh, if you're going to spend the money and you're, you're tossing up between the two, I would definitely go autopilot. So radar is good for the first first few times you go out, or if you if you're doing a lot of night fishing um, or night night travelling, I would definitely think about radar. But for 95% of fishermen, your autopilot is something that you're going to use all the time. So I would definitely uh, definitely spend the money on autopilot before I went radar. That's my opinion, but yeah, that's what I think. Um, so we've got the better trim tabs, a voltage gauge for the second battery, um, separate switch for our electronics to turn that on and off if we've got, um, <coughs> you know, if we, if we don't want that on while we've got the fridge running. GME, VHF, love me GME, wouldn't have anything else. Um, with, this, with this boat we're running the Sonic Hub, so we're running all our music through the, um, the sounder. Just avoids having another unit. And um, I just like being able to control everything by the screen and by your phone. So we've got four speakers, two fusions here, two fusions at the back of the cab. This stereo system pumps. I don't know what it is compared to my last boat. My last boat we had pretty much a similar setup, but um, I think it's because these speakers and these speakers are in their own little boxes now. That just um, yeah, it's just made it sound heaps better. So um, yeah, if you're mounting speakers in your boat, maybe think about putting them in an enclosed box just so you know the noise doesn't resonate through the aluminium it just sounds a lot more a lot more solid <clears throat> um, the fridge we'll check the fridge out we put the fridge on a fridge slide so the fridge is underneath the seat and slides out forward that's gonna work but um, that's how that's it slides out we're going for the Waco because the Waco is the perfect size to fit in here and then to um, pack it all back up again. Reach down. That's it, simple as that. So, 8 litre, nice and big, and um, yeah, happy days. Alright, so seating pretty much identical to the seats I had in the last boat. Um, fold him down to sit on, fold it back up. The seats will move forward and they'll also swivel 360 degrees. So these aren't expensive seats. I think these seats are about 300, 345 bucks a seat. And um, mate, they're super comfortable. They do everything you need to. So yeah. And good thing about having this, having these 
Oceanic Fabrication boats is um, they're a dual, dual plug design and they're a smooth riding hull so no need for suspension seats or any of that sort of stuff but if you need suspension seats then you should probably consider slowing down a little bit in saying that but if I can't do 25 knots through uh, through most stuff, I'm, I get pretty pretty annoyed. But um, yeah, these uh, these hulls are awesome. I will put these hulls up against any other aluminium boat out there. Um, value for money, I reckon that they're the best boat on the market. If you're looking at building a building a custom boat, um, you know, go and see the guys at Oceanic Fabrication because they will look after you. When it came to this this boat. Um, sorry, this this sort of hard top design. We went back and forth probably six or seven times to try and get something that was exactly how I wanted it. And um, mate, Aris is only too keen to help out, and he actually he actually gets excited when you're trying to build something a bit different, like this, like a stout center center cabin. Uh, sorry, center console. Um, you know, because it's not something that you see all every day, but super practical. You know, we've got rod holders. I think we've got like 32 rod holders in this boat. Each each rod holder on the gunnel's got cup holders. You've got cup holders at the back here. You know everything everything that you want to personalise it. Um, you know they will do for you. But uh, yeah, that just about sums it up. We've got deck wash. We're running a deck wash at the back as well. Sorry, so we're not finished. We'll keep going. We're running a, running a um, a high powered deck wash under the uh, on the gunnel there. Um, we've got four deep drop Anderson plugs so if you have a look under here so um, we've got four you know electric reel Anderson plugs down the side of, down, all down this side um, we're running two batteries so we're just running um, one house battery one crank battery we figure that um, that there's no need to have two house batteries for what we're running here we're not running inverters or anything like that so one house battery with with really 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 good solar you know, 180 watts of red arc solar um, keeps that one battery topped up, and uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to have any dramas. So what we're running down here is running three battery isolators. So this is a isolator for the house. This is an isolator for the engine, and this links the two. So if at all we get a flat battery on either either bank, we can link them two together and either start the engine or fire up the um, the BCDC if the batteries are too too low. Quite a neat setup. We're running, um, we're running circuit breakers, resettable circuit, manual resetting circuit breakers for for everything, for the anchor winch, for the um, electric reel, andos, and also the main power feed for up up at the console. In the back corner here, this is where we put our our um, fuel filter. We're also, we've also ordered a water separator, so we won't be going anywhere up north without a water separator. Another thing on the side of the console, if you have a look, there's also storage in the side of the center console. So this is where our wiring harness comes up through, and the rest of that is just storage. So it's storage that we've used, that we've decided to um, have locks on it. So when we go away, if we want to store out our reels and GoPros and drones and that sort of stuff, we'll stick it in there, lock it up. Uh, once again, we decided to go to the carpet. You know, it'd be nice to have deck armour and all that sort of fancy stuff, but carpet does the job for us. You can hose it out, you know, if it's winter time, yeah, it can stay wet for a little while, but um, summertime, it dries out pretty quickly. Lasts about six or seven years before we need to replace it, and um, yeah, it's good to go. So I, um, I have no problem at all putting carpet in them. Works fine for us. Plenty of grab rails, grab rails throughout. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Alrighty, so that's the walk around of our 6.8 metre oceanic fabrication hard top centre console. Uh, any questions, leave a comment below or hit us up on Instagram. But yeah, this is really an awesome boat. Just one thing before we go if you notice the wrap on the side, four signs do all our custom wraps. So they did a custom wrap on the cars, they've done the custom wraps on the boats, and some people are debating do I wrap it or do I paint it? Look, I think if you're gonna wrap it, you just gotta be a bit careful. If you're a bit of a rough bugger and you're um you, you like rafting up boats and all that sort of stuff, probably not really for you, you know. I don't even know if I'd bother painting it if you were gonna go down that track. But look, I think if you spend six or seven thousand dollars on a wrap or you spend twenty grand on a paint job, both are gonna hurt your feelings just as much if you scratch it. So if you're if you look after your gear, 
you know, ha putting a wrap on your boat, no problem. If you're a bit of a bit of a rough bugger and you like bumping it around a bit, obviously, you know, it, it's gonna, it's it's not it's not as hardy as paint. But look, I love the wrap. Get your personal touch on it. Do all your graphics, whatever you want to do. And um, yeah, so my opinion, go wrap. But it's not for everyone. Um, but yeah, if you do need wrap, four signs in Mandra. Go and hit up Tay and Young. Uh, they'll sort you out, mate. Awesome guys. So thanks for watching. Like I said, any any questions, hit us up at, in Instagram or leave a message, and we'll get back to you. Cheers, guys. Y'all see me fly and never drop down, drop down, smoking high, am I am not round, I'm not round, no denying what I got now, I got now, keep an eye out, keep it locked down, locked down, see me fly and never drop down, drop down, smoking high, am I am not round, I'm not round, no denying what I got now, I got now, keep an eye out, keep it locked down, locked down, get too strong when I battle with the beast, bring a few